You heard the term watch proclaimed in the gospel today four times. Watch, be alert. But is that really telling us enough? What does it mean, watch? Well, see, I have a watch on my wrist. It's really kind of neat because there's this little thing that keeps going round and round and round on it. But if I don't know what it's for, it's just a piece of jewelry, albeit a very special jewelry because I received it from my son on, when he was 11 years old, and that's 29 years ago. And so I'm still wearing it. Some new bands, some new crystals, but it's a very special piece of jewelry for me. However, if I never learned how to tell time, it's pretty useless. If a night watchman sees someone breaking into the building but doesn't know what to do by preparation, he might as well just be watching TV. Or the military sentry, he would be useless if the enemy approached and he wasn't prepared with an action plan. See, so there's an unwritten command in this gospel. Of course, the written and verbal command is watch. But behind that is the unwritten command to be prepared when something happens. Today, it's the first Sunday of Advent. It's a time for us to prepare ourselves, not only for the celebration of the nativity of the Lord, but also to prepare for when he comes again, as we pray in the creed to judge the living and the dead. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. But we do ourselves a great disservice if we limit our preparation to only those two events. Our lives have much more than one beginning and one ending. As we progress through our life here on earth, we experience many different paths. When one path ends, another begins. And each ending and beginning requires a relearning process. It requires a new preparedness. A couple weeks ago, Father Ken spoke about the need to prepare for the life events. In preparation, it's not always easy. It takes work, sometimes painful work that we'd probably rather avoid. An example here is our eighth graders at Holy Spirit School. They're enjoying this year as leaders of the school. They've got experience that the other lower grades don't have. But even at that, even with the fun they're having as being the top dogs, they're now having to start to prepare for high school. They're going through tests and applications, in some cases waiting to hear to see if they're accepted into the school of their choice. It can be a time of extra work and frustration. One phase of life ends, another begins. And in four years, they get to do it all over again when they start to prepare for college. And your relationship with Christ is not a one-time only process of preparation. You may not remember it, but you've heard these readings that were proclaimed today before. They were proclaimed on November 30th, 2014. The homily was delivered by Deacon Steve. So why are we doing it again? In fact, since the readings are the same, why didn't we just have Deacon Steve dust off his homily from three years ago and re-deliver it? Is there any difference? Well, absolutely there is. The difference, it's you. Sometimes it's difficult for us to realize what is different about our lives. Groundhog Day, the movie, was released in 1993, starring Bill Murray. He was a TV reporter covering Punxsutawney Phil to see if he saw his shadow when he emerged on Groundhog Day. Each morning, he would wake up, and the exact same things that happened the day before happened again. This went on over and over again, and it took a while for him, but he finally realized that something was different. 
it was him. He slowly came to the realization that he was changing and the events around him were taking on new meaning even though they were the same. And that same thing has happened to you over the last three years. You've had more experiences. You've had three years of being with Jesus. You've had three more years of being with those you love and those who love you. Our experiences in life, they do change us, hopefully more often than not for the better. And it's our responsibility to learn and prepare for those changes. And when they occur, to learn and prepare once again. And as I mentioned earlier, our lives are much more than one beginning and one ending. And that goes the same for our encounters with Jesus. We have multiple opportunities to encounter him in our lives. One is when we come together on Sundays and encounter him at the table where he invites us to partake of his body and blood. But do we take the time to properly prepare or do we take it for granted that he is here? Do we participate in the Mass wholly and actively? Do we pray that we will receive him unconditionally just as he receives us unconditionally? At Holy Spirit, there are currently about 160 adults and children who are preparing to receive the body and blood of Jesus for the first time next spring. Included, this includes the friends in our new spread program. Shouldn't we, who partake every week, shouldn't we all approach the table with that same enthusiasm and preparation that they are going through? Or you could also encounter an experience with Jesus in our Adoration Chapel. If we would all spend about an hour a week in quiet prayer and contemplation before Jesus in the chapel, we would be much better prepared for whatever is next in our life. And how special it would be to be able to bookend our receiving communion by going into the chapel before mass to prepare ourselves to receive. And then by going after mass to give thanks for all that Jesus has done for us, both individually and collectively. Don't think of it as a burden for, because of the extra time involved. Think of it as a blessing for the grace and peace that you will find, as well as giving out of the heaviest part of the parking lot traffic. So we're still hoping to keep the chapel open later into the night, but we need people to volunteer who can attend during those times. If this is you, please check in with the rectory office and sign up so we can make the chapel more available so people can go in when they feel the need. We also encounter Jesus in our relations with each other. In these, in these relations, we have a choice. We can see Jesus in others, or we can let our own agendas get in the way. Remember last week, Father Matt gave us the key on how to encounter Jesus through our relationships. It is, you did it to me. Everything you do to others, you do to him. And there's another opportunity coming up for you to prepare for this Advent season as well as the coming Christmas season, and that is the Sacrament of Reconciliation. On December 18th at 7 p.m., we will have our Advent communal reconciliation. There will be six priests to hear your confessions and present God's grace and forgiveness. Is there any better way to approach the nativity than with a clean heart and the absence of sin? And as an added bonus with that many priests, you'll be able to find one who doesn't know you. And being there and seeing so many others experience that sacrament makes it an extraordinary, beautiful evening. While there's still a private conversation between you and your confessor, experiencing so many participating brings alive the words in Confidior, I confess to you, my brothers and sisters. And then later, 
and I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. And there is no better way, no better feeling than after you receive the absolution. You walk away with a lighter step and nothing, nothing can distract from the blessing that you have just received. In today's reading from Isaiah proclaimed by Raymond, we heard, would that you might meet us doing right, that we are mindful of you in our ways. How does that happen? by putting away our own egos and agenda and letting the Holy Spirit guide us in our life, by recognizing that we are the clay and he is the potter. When we think that we can do it ourselves, we fail to be prepared properly and therefore our encounters with Jesus and others will be sorely lacking. So today, I add to the command, watch, the command, be prepared. God bless you all.